What is up, heroes? It's Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Professor Lane and the Curious Village Blind. In the last episode, we continued our search, or rather, really started our search for Raymond. Um, we interacted with another cute cat and some mice, uh, solved quite a few puzzles related to them. We chatted with Lucy and... Oh, I forget his name. Jarvis? No, we were looking for Jarvis. Somebody that we're going to need to go back to the cafe at night. Um, but regardless, this... I believe is going to be the same story so far segment okay well for those of you that were looking for the refresher here's a, a quick refresher and now we went to the left because again I said that I'm that type of person that likes to go all of the unnecessary routes right if I know one route is going to advance the story I might as well investigate the other route to make sure I'm not missing out on anything anything else anything of interest not the umbrella not the windows all right well we'll chat with this person here see what they have to say. Archibald, lend me an ear, would ya? I'd like your expert opinion on this puzzle. It won't take but a minute. <laughs> no introduction, no transition, just, hey, puzzle please. <laughs> How old is dad? A father and son are chatting when the son p poses this question. Dad, I'm 22 now, but just how old are you? The father replies, you want to know how old your, man is, your old man is, eh? Hmm, well, I'll tell you what. I'm as old as your age plus half of my age. How old is the father? It's a little bit of a redemption arc for that <laughs> mishap from the other episode. Okay, so if we say that the father's age is X, right? Um, X is equal to, in this case, 22 plus one half X. You subtract one half X on both sides, you get one half X is equal to 22, and thus X is equal to 44. So the should be 44 years old. And just running through to make sure our answer is correct. Um, if he were 44, uh, and you know you have that, you get 22, and you add that to the son's age, 22, you get 44. So yeah, feel pretty good about that one. Nice 44. That was not a zero. <laughs> 44. Okay. There we go. Awesome. Critical yeah, and that one thinking is the key to success. That one was indeed a pretty quick one. <laughs> that's right, half of your father's age plus yada yada yada. Okay, that's the math there. If you want to take a closer look, feel free to pause. Something, oh that's right, something I've been wanting to say for a few episodes now is, and I'm sure some of you have already started doing if it's something of interest, but if you want to solve these puzzles before I talk through them, um, just pause the video and you can try to work through it yourself and then see if you come up with a different way of thinking about it, a different perspective and if you do please do share that in the comments below i'm always curious to learn about how people's brains work in different ways how people's minds see things differently and may be able to offer a new insight or new perspective on a problem i thought was relatively one-dimensional so if that is something um that applies to you please i guess please do um share Anyways, mm-hmm. I guess I was on the right track all along. Thanks for your help, boys. Sorry for taking up so much of your time. I'll let you get back to what you were doing. Good day. Okay. We got ourselves another gizmo as well. And really nothing of interest in here? Nothing else. At least it doesn't seem so. Wow. Okay, well... We'll head to the right. So now we're at Northern Hill. So if we took the left path, we still end up here. Which presumably is the same as if we had gone through the right path, which is where we went before. Interesting. Alright. Well, I guess we'll explore what's in here. That door doesn't look like it's going to open. Anything going on here? No. Anything hidden in these little crevices? No, I guess not. I'd say it's eerily quiet. <laughs> Alright, let's chat with this person and see what they have to say. Who might you be? Gerard. Oh, hello there. Say, Sonny, you haven't seen a big coin around here, have you? I could have sworn that I dropped a lovely one somewhere nearby. See, I always seem to be losing things nowadays, and replacing them gets mighty expensive. I've become quite a penny pincher. Don't suppose you'd mind advising me on a tiny money matter, would you? Ah, so that's the puzzle. Finances. Spare change. Ten picorettes. Oh my goodness. A rope and coins are arranged as shown below. 
As you pull the ends of the rope out to the left and right, the rope will draw taut and push the coins to either side. Assuming you only get to keep the coins that end up on the top half of the rope. How many coins will you have? So, unfortunately, I think we're just going to have to follow along the rope and see whatever is on the top half of it. And that's going to be the difficulty here, is counting, really, and making sure we track along the rope. So, I guess I'll start on the left side and I'll make a note every time we get to a coin whether or not it's on the bottom or, half, or bottom or top, right? So, starting on the left, we follow along the rope. I obviously can't show you guys, really. Um, but we get to the first coin, it's on the bottom half. We continue, and then there's another coin that is on the bottom half. We continue, and then we have one on the top half, and then the next one is immediately on the bottom half. We continue again, we have bottom half. And then we keep going, keep going. And this, interestingly, is bottom half. They're, they're mixing around the orientation of the rope and everything, which is where it gets kind of tricky. So bottom half again, bottom half again, top half, and then, ooh, that's a difficult one to count. Um, but bottom half again, bottom half, and then there's another sort of top half, top half. Counting these or keeping track of them is going to be the toughest part. I should have been just like counting on my fingers. I think we're at four. Um, and I don't want to have to go through this again, but just to be safe, <laughs> there was one there and then one there as well. Okay, so yeah, we are at four with where we are right now on the rope. I want to make sure I don't get lost. So then bottom half. Bottom half, bottom half, bottom half. Oh god, this is annoying. <laughs> this is just annoying. Having to follow the rope around like that. Because you just have to maintain like the orientation, right? Um, I guess one thing you could do, let's, actually I want to think about it in, in this way. Um, so if we split the, the screen into the top half and bottom half, clearly this line is, this squiggle, this rope is one continuous line. Now what we can do is, we can start at the very top of the screen, up by where those arrows are, and see what pockets there are that we can sort of explore into, um, that are bound by the rope. And if we find any coins, those would be ones that end up on the top half. So if we look at this top area here and we explore this route, right? Fill in this pocket in this pocket, etc. We don't find any coins. So there will be none on the top half there. Similarly, we can look in this little pocket, which obviously doesn't have any. This pocket has one. So that's, that's one. We'll put like a tally mark down here. Or can I not? A tally mark. Okay. We'll put a tally there. And then we'll continue along this pocket. We don't find anything. This pocket, we don't find anything. Now this pocket is where it's gonna get interesting. There's nothing up here, nothing down here, nothing down here. But then this pocket is really deep. So we find another one. Oh, that's right. So now we're at two, right? Yeah, that's our second one. Then we continue along this path. And we have a third coin. So we'll add our another another tally. That was these tallies are really tough to, to see um, or to keep spaced appropriately, I guess. One, two, three. So we're at three. We're gonna branch to the left first. We'll keep going along in here. We got another one, so that's a four. And now we branch down here, and wow, we continue to branch all the way in here. We have five. Okay, now we branch to the left, which goes through our tally mark, lovely. And if we follow along the spiral, we get one more. So we're at six, I'll draw a tally like that. Yeah, um, and then we go back to where we branched off to go into that little spiral. And now we can keep going up and we get another one. So that would be our seventh one. Now we go back to other branching points we could have been. Um, and we get all the way back over here. 
let's start by going down this way. Nothing that way. And there's one over here. So that's going to be three. And now we can go up this way. We'll find another one. So that's our ninth total. And then we continue down this way and we don't find any more. So I think the total is going to be nine. Do I want to go through that process again just to check? <laughs> Do I want to go through that process again just to check? Um, again, I think it's nine. I do really want to quickly just check to be safe. There are none up this way. There's one here. And then I'm pretty sure all of them really come from uh, this last pocket, which is significantly deeper. So we'll want to be careful here. Um, there are none over on the left this way. So then we go to the right. There's a second one. Then we go this way. Here's our third one, fourth, and then fifth. And again, there was nothing down over this way. We'll keep going this way. We find our sixth there. Then we keep coming this way. Find our seventh, find our eighth. And then again, there's one down here. Yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with nine. But man, was that not fun. <laughs> Just because it, we it was, I, would, I would consider that more tedium than anything. But um, Every puzzle maybe if there's, answer. if you guys have a better way of looking at that question. Uh, I mean, initially, there are two potential ways to go about it that I thought of, right? If you maintain an orientation for which space on which side of the line is the top and which is the bottom, and you follow the line from left to right. But I was having a difficult time keeping all of that um, straight. So what I thought was better was to just start on the top of the screen and then fill in those pockets as you saw. Um, maybe they have something better, but you'll gather up nine coins when the rope is pulled taut. It's really quite a simple puzzle, but following every coin's path does take quite a bit of time. Oh, so they suggest even a third perspective where you go to each coin and see if it comes out on the, the bottom or the top. Interesting. Well, regardless, we got it. <laughs> My, what a sharp fellow you are. Now do an old man a favor and help me search for that coin, eh? Do you actually want us to help search for that coin, or, or what might it be? Anything else over here? No, I guess, I guess not. Then I guess we'll go up this way. Um, I also, I think we've gotten a couple more gizmos. So, just want to place those. And see, okay, yeah, we still got uh, four or five left. But I always, I don't want to, I guess, realize too late that we've, you know, got all the gizmos we need. Let's see who this uh, gentleman is with the rather large nose. <laughs> this, this is Jarvis, who is going to have a better v idea on where Raymond actually is. Let me tell you, lately, St. Mysterio has become a dangerous place. Case in point, I haven't seen Raymond since yesterday. Is that rascal missing or something? Oh, he beat us to the punch. I don't know why people are disappearing, but recently they just vanished. Poof, you can't walk the streets alone. Really? Interesting. Jarvis seems to imply that it's more than just Raymond. Could you please elaborate a bit more on what you know of these mysterious disappearances? Nope, can't say I know the particulars on the subject. Seems to me that the only folks vanishing were the ones complaining of feeling sick or tired. Aw, oh, shucks. I, I don't really, uh remember much about it. It makes me think maybe they were, like, drugged or something prior to their disappearance if they were, you know, kidnapped. You probably have better luck talking with Zepone about stuff like this. I hear he's in the know about pretty much everything. Zepone, was that the guy with the cafe? Zepone, you say? Where might we find this person? Who's a was a? You mean you didn't bump into him on the way here? He's the slouchy guy with that fancy little mustache. You'll know him when you see him. Wow, it sure is hard to catch a lead on this case. The day is far from over, Luke. Let's see what else we can find out by asking around. Okay. Anything else of interest in here? On the floor? In the background? Not a soul seems to live here. Wow, that empty of a place, huh? And, oh, they're not going to let us go any further north. So. Alright, I mean, I guess... I guess we'll chat with Zapone again. He said to come back at nighttime, though, right? 
looking into the mysterious disappearances around the village, are you? Well, let me give you my take on the situation. Well, um, hmm. Is something the matter? Yeah, you having a difficult time talking about it? Ah, yes, now I remember. If it's rumors you're after, take a tip from a fellow detective and go ask Crouton. He owns the restaurant in town. Okay. Where was that again? Crouton. Hmm, you're looking for the restaurant now? It's not far, just head a little to the west of here. But before you run off again, I've got a tip for you. If you want to experience all that St. Mysterio has to offer, you can't just run from point A to point B. Take some time and explore the city from corner to corner. You'll be glad you did. Much appreciated. We'll be sure to give that a try. Come, Luke, we have work to do. <laughs> that's funny. Um, and it's appreciated, though, right? Because for the completionist like me, that's like uh, the game telling you, hey, you should probably check... You should probably check out what's going on. Um, in other places. You don't have to go to just where the story is. In, in the event that, you know, you don't want to miss any puzzles. So, like, if we go in the inn, do you have anything to say now? Maybe, probably not, but hello there, gentlemen. I've got a doozy of a puzzle on my hands here. Why don't you give it a go? Okay. Much to my surprise, there's, oh, there's puzzle 18. <laughs> we're, we were missing that one for quite some time. All right. As you can see, what we've got here is some trash and a dustpan made of matchsticks. Can you move two matchsticks to change the picture so the dustpan is holding the trash? So the trash is this paper ball or whatever it is, right? And we have to move two matchsticks so that it's holding the, uh, the trash, right? What's weird is that this this matchstick in the middle. Hmm. Because if I were to do something like like this, for example, where I put it like here and rotate it like that, like what I that's like what I want to do, you know? <laughs> and then rotate this like that. It's not quite it's not quite the same. <laughs> and I doubt I'm allowed to move this. Yeah, I don't have any moves left. So that particular match is proving to be a problem. Can I rotate a matchstick without moving it? No, I can't. If I rotate it at all, that counts as moving it. Okay. That helps clarify things. Um... Oh, I see. So I need to move this one over here, like that, and then I just slide this one over. And now the dustpan is holding it. And I don't think I need to be worried about the orientation of the matchsticks, so let's, um, let's do that. Luke, here's my answer. Awesome. Yeah, it Every was that has an answer. that horizontal matchstick that was the real linchpin there. <laughs> Do your part to keep Saint Mysterio clean. <laughs> oh yes, it's just as I suspected. The first time I laid eyes on you, I knew you were a man who knows puzzles. Oh, a handwoven rug. Um, sure, let's go with Layton. <laughs> it's not really too pertinent right now. Do you have any other puzzles for us? Possibly. Raring to try another puzzle? Ooh, nothing gets my heart racing like a passionate man. Unfortunately, I don't have any good puzzles right now, but do check back later. Interesting. So, people might regain multiple puzzles, um, probably like with each chapter, presumably. Interesting. That's good to know, though. So, now we're back at the drawbridge. <laughs> They're awfully stuck there. Oh, the drawbridge is back up. That bridge appears to be the only way out of St. Mysterio. It seems that we're confined to this town for the moment. Oh my. And to make matters worse, it seems no one can find the crank to lower the bridge. Well then, my boy, all we can do is wait. Let us attend to our business in the village. We can inspect the car. Not even the Leighton Mobile. Is that what it's called, the Leighton Mobile? Love it. <laughs> can make it across the river, huh? 
But of course, much as I adore the contraption, it is just a car after all. Haha, <laughs> Luke, our little exchanges remind me of a wonderful puzzle about cars. Why don't you give it a try? Of course. Puzzle 19, Parking Lot Gridlock. It's gonna be another one of those block puzzles. It is. The late mobile, the professor's pride and joy is stuck behind several other cars trying to exit a crowded parking lot. Things are so tight though, that each car can only move forward and backward with respect to the direction it's currently facing. Use your stylus to direct traffic and guide the professor's red car to the exit. And is there any move restriction? No, not quite. Okay, um, well in terms of what we can move right off the bat, I think we're gonna want to... Hmm, how are we gonna want to start this? How do we want to start this? In order to, I guess, gain some sort of mobility, right? I can't move the one in the top left. I can move the, the horizontal one over to the right, like that. And then can consequently move this guy up. Oh, I just click on the arrows. That's convenient. So we're already kind of closer. Um, what's interesting though is I can't move them like one block at a time. So the obvious difficulty here is this um, this middle truck in the fourth column. If I try to move anything, I'm not gonna have a lot of flexibility because I won't be able to move that truck. So that can't be 100% the, the way to start. What I'm going to want to do is try to just move one slot forward for now. That way I can move this up and then both of these back. And then... And then do I want to go up with that and then... Yeah, I think that's what I want to do. No, it's not what I want to do. <laughs> no! Um... do I want to go about this? I mean, I guess I could always just slide these guys in here like that and then go back and then over here, here, and then up again and that'll be good across, but I don't I don't think that was very I think I've got it. optimal in terms of moving. I did it! Yes! Do they tell me how many moves it can be done? 14. Yeah, I figured. Um, there was that mishap in the middle where I had to rearrange things. Interesting. I'll, I'll be curious to try that again at some point. Well, that takes care of the puzzle, but I do wonder when I'll be able to get my automobile. Oh, we got ourselves another gizmo. Cool, so I, I appreciate how much they really, I guess, reward um, exploring around and going through the, the, I guess, like the work of going through all the puzzles. It really does make a big difference. I think we already explored a lot of these areas. Um, I don't know if we went in all of the houses, though. Do we have another puzzle with the candles? Oh look, another candle, Luke. That reminds me, have you heard this one before? <laughs> Is it another one? Number 33, light which one? Interesting, it is! So, yeah, even going back to the same objects can reveal more puzzles. That's, that's really good to know. I'm a little bit mixed in terms of whether or not I like that. I feel like it makes it so there's more like, okay, new chapter, gotta go back and recheck all the same items I've already checked. But at the same time, I appreciate that um, they at least let you know to 
check back and explore things, and they're managing to fit so many puzzles in this game. Anyways, you have only one match left. You want to light the room with an oil lamp, start a fire to warm the room, and heat your bath water in order to complete all the books. Okay, it's the match. This is just a classic. Um, <laughs> this is classic. It's the I match. Think I've got it. Yep. <laughs> I've heard that Ladies one. I, that's, like I said, a classic one. That's right, the first thing you need to light is the match itself. Without a fire source, how could you possibly start to take care of the lamp, bath water, or fireplace? Wonderful work, Luke. That is indeed the answer. I don't see anyone minding the shop at the moment. Perhaps we should leave for now. We got a pine bed. Okay. Luke's got to get his rest. Otherwise, he'll be all cranky. I imagine Leighton would, you know, maintain himself a little bit better. <laughs> Anything else of interest in here? I don't remember. Oh, there was the chairs, right? I guess the villagers really like beige. <laughs> the self-awareness is hilarious. Okay, um, do you have anything more to say to us? Any puzzles? We, I know we asked for your direction at some point, but... The thing is, I've got a hot puzzle here, and there's no way I'm waiting until later to show you. So hold that investigation, Prof. You've got a puzzle to solve. <laughs> it is the case. So even after we talk to people for the sake of, um just progressing the story we should talk to them again so that we can get puzzles that's really funny okay so we have a racehorse riddle the distance three racehorses can run around the racetrack in one minute in one minute is listed below horse a two laps horse b three laps horse c four laps the horses line up at the starting line and start running in the same direction how many minutes will pass before all three horses line up at the starting line again okay so this is like a basically a least common multiple problem so what's generally considered an easy way to do this is just multiply them all together and get an answer however you actually need to divide out by common factors um, so another way to think about it is in terms of you f you multiply them together and then you check um, like multiples of it in a way I guess how, how do I say it um, you you divide out by repeated factors. So you do two, 2 times 3 times 4, right? And you get 24. But when you do like a prime factorization of that, that'll be, what, 3 times 2 times 2? Times 2. Yeah, 3 times 2 times 2 times 2. Now, you would want to factor out one of those two because, ah, how do I explain this? Um, because you still want, we're dealing with two, three, and four. You want two, three, and four to be, I guess, accessible by any combination of the factors you have remaining without any excess. So when you have three times two times two, you have access to two, you have access to three, and you have access to four, and you have no extra factors. Um, and so that's that's the most efficient way to find the least common multiple, which is in this case going to be 12 as a result. Um, and that's going to be the answer here. But yeah, um, a, a good way to go about problems like this or find least common multiples is to multiply the three things you're looking at together. You can kind of trial error and see like, okay, what are multiples of two? And what's the first multiple of two that's also divisible by three? And then you say, is it divisible by four? And if not, then you keep going and you'll eventually get to 12 before 24. But, you know, for bigger numbers, what you can do is multiply them together and then do a prime factorization and see the minimum number of factors you need in order to get the, th the individual numbers you're, um, you multiplied in the first place. And then once you get rid of all the excess factors, looking at what that number actually is. So, yeah, that's probably way more than you guys wanted to hear <laughs> about something like this but I'm fairly confident it'll be 12 um, because like I said after two laps uh, horse B will not have made it back neither will horse C after four laps um, horse B will be in the middle of a lap at six horse C will be in the middle of a lap and so forth up until 12 where horse C will be back at the start line horse B will be back at the start line and horse A so we'll submit 12 Luke, here's my answer. What? Frankly, I'm ashamed. 
What? That wasn't right? Am I missing something? <laughs> After I went through all of that. Oh! Wait a minute. How many minutes, right? <laughs> It'll be after they've done 12 laps. I, I solved the wrong problem. <laughs> Great. Um, so that, that changes things quite a bit. So now, how do we think about it? Because if you look at it in terms of like, oh, if they've all done 12 laps, which is when they would, you know, finally overlap, um, but the, num the amount of time it would take to get to that 12 is different. So instead, it's after how many minutes will they actually overlap um, back at the start line, right? So it's going to be actually more than that. And in this case, funnily enough, I think it'll be six minutes, um, which would be the 24 for, for C. Um, because, I mean, this is one you can just work your way up, right? After one minute, it's obviously not going to be, they're obviously not gonna be back at the start line. Um, although, although halfway through a minute, right? You know, A will be at the start line and so will C. So you can consider in terms of like half minutes, although I think they only want really like integer answers. Um, how many minutes will pass before all three horses line up at the starting line again? So it might just be like a minute and a half. No, it's gotta be some even number just because of the three laps per minute. So after two minutes, um, they should be back at the starting point, I think. C does four laps in a minute. So after two minutes, it'll be back at the starting point. And then A um, will be back at the starting point after two minutes as well. And then... Wait a minute. <laughs> I think I'm overthinking this. Isn't it just one minute? Right? Because the only thing that's changing is how many laps they do in a minute, but they're still completing laps, right? And every complete lap is going from the start line to the end line, or back to the start line again. So after one minute, A will have completed two laps, but will be back at the start line. After one minute, B will have completed three laps, but be back at the start line. And C, after one minute, will have completed four laps, but be back at the starting line. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the answer. All right, well, I guess uh, I hope my discussion about least common multiples and the factors involved in prime factorization was interesting to some. Um, but I completely misinterpreted the, the question in the beginning, and I should have known that it wouldn't have been that complication heavy. Okay, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just one minute. Yeah, so I'm gonna go with that. That should do it. Unbelievable. Another puzzle solved. <laughs> well, I guess that brings our score to an even 1060 picarets rather than having, you know, the sevens and all that. But that's that's really funny actually. I was totally thinking about it differently. Hey, nice one. You're pretty slick with puzzles. Guess that's why you got that top hat, huh? Thought so. All right, then prof, since you did such a good job, I suppose I'll let you pass through. Wait, <laughs> I didn't even realize you were obstructing our our pathway. Okay, um, then I guess we'll, we'll continue heading back. We can go towards the manor. Is there a new river crossing puzzle? Huh? Look, there's a hole in that boat there. 
Oh, Professor, that reminds me, have you heard the one about the sinking ship? <laughs> exactly, wow, so we really are gonna have to go back and and plug all of these holes. <laughs> you know, context fitting, right? Oh man, SOS, 15 people are trapped aboard a ship that's going to sink in exactly 20 minutes. Their only chance for survival is the five-person life raft stowed on their vessel. To make matters worse, the waters around the ship are teeming with man-eating sharks. So swimming to safety is out of question. A round trip to the nearest island and back to the boat takes nine minutes on the raft. How many people will live to see dry land? So... So the, the obvious, right, like the, the obvious answer that I'm sure they're going for here is, okay, you can fit five people on the life raft and a round trip takes nine minutes. So in nine minutes, five people will get to the island and then the um, life raft will be back. You load it up again with another five people, another nine minutes. It's been 18 minutes. There are two minutes left before the ship sinks and 10 people are on the island. However, you still have two minutes to load the ship and then send it um, towards the island. So I think the the obvious answer, the, the, I guess, tempting but wrong answer is to say, oh, 10 people, because five people make it on the first trip and five people make it on the second trip. But the real answer is going to be five people because 15 are able to get on the life raft before the ship sinks, which is all that really matters. Um, so, how many people will live to see dry land? I think the answer is 15. And I don't really see much reason for it to be any different. They don't indicate that there's, you know, some change in the rate of sinking of the ship based on how many people there are. Or any, you know, trickiness about, oh, well, they're going to make it to the island, but they're not going to actually survive anyway, so there will be, you know, zero, whatever, right? <laughs> I'm going to go with 15. Yeah, I think, I think 15 is what they're aiming for. And again, it's how many people will live, okay? Not how many people will sink. <laughs> that should do it. That's not correct? Frankly, I'm ashamed. Ah. <laughs> Darn. That's clever. That is clever. Wow, this episode, I mean, compared to all the previous episodes, this episode is bodying me. So, yeah, that is true, that one person must man the ship. <laughs> By now, you must have realized. No, I, I hadn't considered it. Um... I definitely overlooked that. So, five people will board the ship first, right? And we'll go to the island. Four people will get off the island, and one person will come back. And then they will take another four people, who will put four more on the island. So there are eight on the island, and then one person will come back and pick up four more people. And then five more people will get to the dry island before the ship sinks. So it'll be eight plus five, or thirteen. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll go with 13. And again, I feel there like I'm go. pretty on point about that. Okay. Every that was clever. Has an answer. That was clever. I did not consider that. Of course, somebody would need to man the, the boat back to the ship, which is clever. And now we're back to this uneven 1087. Great. <laughs> Moment of silence for the two who didn't make it, please. Or the seven. Wow, great answer, Professor. It took me five times as long to get that one. That was, that was a tough one. No doubt about it. Well, let's head back into the manor and see if there are any more puzzles to be solved within the manor. Because apparently there are quite a few more. Or, you know, there could be more puzzles in the same places we've looked in the past. So we'll take a look. Flora Reinhold. Okay. Um, we'll chat with Matthew again and see if he has any more puzzles for us. If there's anything I can do to aid your investigation, please don't hesitate to ask, sir. Thank you, Matthew. Guess not. <laughs> we can head up the household. 
Um, we can chat with them potentially, but nothing in the chandelier. Nothing with plates in the background or whatnot. Lady Dahlia, do you have something for us? Any word of Raymond's whereabouts? Nope, I guess not. Inspector Chelmy? Is that what your name is? Chelmy? My, my, our murderer is quite the slippery one, but rest assured, Mr. Layton, there isn't a criminal alive that can outwit me. I'll have him behind bars before you know it. Wow. Rather confident, are we? Okay, so then we will head out. And keep on heading out. <laughs> Could we go in here? Was this the restaurant or was that? No, that was that. Okay. Then we'll go to the left. We are now in the town square. The clock tower does not have anything new for us. Did we go in here already? We haven't talked to him recently. We'll see if he has another puzzle for us. I hear you've been investigating St. Mysterium. Feel free to continue, but stay away from that tower. That place brings misfortune upon the village, and I strongly advise you to keep your distance. Okay. Um, pens. We can go through this door. Oh, wait. Is there anything in the back? What a loon! <laughs> um, the chandelier. I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. So I guess we'll head out. And then... What if we head to the left of the clock tower? And head over this way. Oh my goodness! Oh, what the heck was that sound? Ugh. Oh, I have just had it! Would someone please stop that awful racket? What's the matter, sir? Who are you calling sir? I'm a young man. Ah, but never mind that. I'm furious! That sound, that horrible noise, I can't get a wink of sleep at night. Used to be the tower only made noise every once in a while, but recently it's been roaring non-stop. How am I supposed to sleep? You hear me? You big jerk of a tower, how am I supposed to sleep? <laughs> Please calm yourself, sir. Do you have any idea what the source of that deafening din is? You know, now that you mention it, I don't have the slightest clue about that. I've heard it's the roar of a huge monster that lives up in the tower, but who knows? Interesting. So the noise is coming from the tower, is it? Add it to our list of mysteries. Now, we've been recording for a decent bit of time, however, I really want to solve another puzzle. So, let's see if you have anything to say for us. Tee hee hee. Like, I get so worked up that he turns red like a tomato. He looks so dumb. She still does not have anything for us. Do you have a puzzle for us, despite your anger? Oh, this time I'm just livid. It's just too much to take. The needle on my wrath meter is completely buried. Why am I so worked up, you ask? It's this blasted puzzle. I've been trying to work it out since yesterday. I just can't get it. It has me so steamed I can't sleep. You stupid jerk of a puzzle. Wow, a lot of, lot of obstacles to sleeping well, it seems. Come here and take a look, will you? Puzzle number 21, pill prescription. Relevant. <laughs> um, for those of you that don't know, I'm in medical school. So, uh, a man has been prescribed 10 pills. Starting today, he must take one pill a day, but because the concentration of the medicine is different in each pill, he must take them in a specific order. Since the pills all look the same, the man has decided to write numbers on each pill to help him remember the order he needs to take them in. How many pills does he have to number if he wants to keep track of the order? So it's obviously not 10, right? Um, because not having a marking could be considered, well, a way of identifying a pill, right? So it's at most nine. Is there any more efficient way to do that? Probably. You have to mark, hmm. Each pill is specific, right? He must take them in a specific order. And, I mean, like, is there a specific way? How many pills does he have to number? I'm trying to think if there's something clever, maybe, with, like, ordering the pills such that they're, like, blue side up, white side down, and then the next one is white side up, blue side down, and keeping track of things in, you know, in that way. This is 30 pick rats. There's probably more to it. But we don't have any indication of how the man could organize them, right? Are they just jumbled in his pocket and then he ta takes one out and has to make sure he's taking the right one? Because if so, that would make me think it has to be nine.
And because each one is different, it's not like, oh, there, there are any that are interchangeable, you know, and could have the same mark, right? Hmm. And the pills all look the same. Is there something tricky going on, like, with the phrasing of keep track of the order, right? Because the man always knows the order, but does he know the, the order of the pills, or which pill is which, right? This man has decided to write numbers on each pill to help him remember the order he needs to take them in. Hmm, I feel like it's gonna have something to do with that. Like, oh, he's gonna know the order. Like, writing something down on the pills isn't gonna help him remember the order of which, like, of the pills to take. It would actually help him take the correct one. I don't know if that's what they're aiming for, though. <laughs> that's the frustrating part. How many pills does he have to number if he wants to keep track of the order? In order to keep track of the order... But then 9 seems too obvious. I'll be frustrated if, it's, if I answer 9 and it's wrong, and then they're like... Hmm, does he need to write down the pills in order to actually remember? You know, something like that. But maybe, maybe I just gotta go for it. Hmm. The other thing is, okay, what else? I guess there's one other thing to consider, right? If he takes one pill today, he will have nine left, right? So let's say he's looking at all 10 pills and he's like, here's my pill for today, takes it. And then he's like, now I need to remember the order of the remaining nine. Then you only need to mark eight. <laughs> right? I actually think that might be what they're going for. So he has 10 pills, he has to take one today, so he takes that one, and now he needs to mark the remaining nine, or remember the order of the remaining nine, so he actually needs to mark eight. I think that's the intended answer here. There may be some wording trickiness with regards to remembering the order versus actually ensuring he takes them in the correct order, but I think I'm going to go with eight here and see how that goes. Maybe I'm overthinking it. That should do it. Maybe there's a simpler solution, but that's it. Wow, Critical that was is the key to success. That was tricky. Also, 1117 figurettes. I actually I like that number a lot. <laughs> Good job. Since the man has to start taking his medicine today, the first thing he should do is take today's pill. Next, he should label the pills for days 2 through 9. If he does this, he shouldn't have to label the pill for the last day. It will be the only one without a label. He only needs to label 8 pills. That was clever. What were you thinking, man? And here I was ready to solve it all by myself. Why do you have to go and ruin everything? The nerve! <laughs> Can't get it right. Catch-22. But with that puzzle solved, I can finally sleep again. So I guess I owe you one. Thanks. And I know you both have your work cut out for you. So good luck, yeah? And we got a gizmo. Awesome. So we're pretty close to being done with these gizmos. And we've also been... Had, or we've also had this episode going on for quite some time. Let's see what we can do with the gizmos we currently have. And yeah, it looks like we're only really like one, two, or, or three parts away. 
which is pretty exciting. But, of course, we're going to have to continue solving these mysteries, continue solving these puzzles in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know we didn't really progress the story a whole lot, um, but it is neat to go back and solve... I mean, obviously, the puzzles are the highlight of this game. Uh, and so it was fun to go back and solve a lot of the puzzles from areas that we'd already explored. It's good to know that that's something we can do. So I do want to continue exploring um, the park road area by the fence, by the park, um, going in these buildings. And then, what were we even supposed to do again? Talk to Cruton? Or, yeah, Crouton. <laughs> um, he's in the restaurant. So that's the next thing we're going to do to advance the story and hopefully locate Raymond slash maybe figure out why people are mysteriously disappearing. What's up with that? <laughs> But, anyways, I hope you guys are looking forward to the next episode just as much as I am. But until that next episode, this is Movie Night Zero, and this mission is complete.